Hi, welcome to What's Happening. Here are the top five stories. At number five, the Nigerian military has released 1,009 ex Boko Haram insurgents who had been in the military custody at Giwa Barracks in Medugri, Bonu State, to the state government. The former insurgents were handed over to the Bonu State government on Wednesday in a secret ceremony that was initially scheduled to take place at an earlier date but was suspended indefinitely by the military authorities due to the appointment of the new chief of army staff. Military sources revealed to newsmen that the 1,009 ex-terrorists were handed over to the Commissioner for Women Affairs and Social Development, Hajia Gambu, who represented the state government at the event. At number four, the Federal Executive Council has approved the award of a contract for the construction of five roads in the country to Dangote Industries. The road, totaling 274.9 kilometers, is at the cost of 309.9 billion naira. The Minister of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, disclosed this on Wednesday while briefing State House correspondents after the Federal Executive Council meeting presided over by President Mohamed Buhari. He said the contract is to be advanced to the company as tax credit. The five roads are located in Borno, Kaduna, Lagos and Ogun states. Fashola explained that the award of the contract to Dangote Group was consistent with funding options. At number three, the Senate has passed a bill that seeks to establish an Electoral Offenses Commission. If signed into law, the legislation will empower the Commission to investigate electoral offenses, prosecute electoral offenders, and maintain records of all persons investigated and prosecuted. The bill also prescribes a 20-year jail term or 40 million naira fine for anyone, be it candidate or agent, found guilty of snatching ballot boxes or election materials during and after elections. The legislation was passed following the presentation and consideration of the report of the Senate Committee on Independent National Electoral Commission. Kabiru Gaya, the chairman of the committee, in his presentation said the bill became necessary due to INEC's inability to prosecute electoral offenders in accordance with the provisions of Section 149 and 150 subsection 2 of the Electoral Act as amended. At number two, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has launched an app called Eagle Eye, designed for online reporting of economic and financial crimes in the country. The app was launched on Wednesday, July 14, 2021, by the chairman of the commission, Abdul Rashid Bawa. The spokesman of the EFCC, Wilson Uwudarin, disclosed this in a statement released after the launch. Bawa described the app as the first of its kind by any law enforcement agency in Nigeria and a product of ingenuity by a staff of the commission, being an application that was birthed, designed and developed by the EFCC. The EFCC boss further explained that the unique advantage of the application is it eliminates direct person-to-person -person interface in the reporting process and guarantees anonymity, which is an added incentive to effective whistleblowing. At number one, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Namdi Kanu, has spoken for the first time since he was arrested abroad and brought back to Nigeria weeks ago to face trial. Kanu's lawyer, Aloy Ejimako, who was allowed to meet with him inside the DSS detention facility on Wednesday in Abuja, said he spoke with the IPOB leader for about three hours. Ejimako told newsmen on Thursday morning that the people that abducted him said that they were told by their sponsors that Kanu was a Nigerian terrorist linked to the Islamic terrorist in Kenya, presumably Al-Shabaab. But after several days when they discovered his true identity, they tended to treat him less badly. Despite that, they told him they felt committed to hand him over to those that hired them. He also disclosed that Kanu said he had been subjected to mental and psychological torture in DSS custody and that the pro-Biafra leader has appealed to a federal high court in Abuja to transfer him to Kujie prison. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for now. See you next time on What's Happening.